Khan. A sore. Khan a sore. Hey, uh, can you just perform my shoulder? It's a little ah, not too hard. It's connoisseur. <laughs> Welcome back to Fresh. I'm in a garden. Now part of our brief on the show is to make sure we bring you the freshest poly talent in the world. Check out these guys in Massive Theatre Company as they take it to the stage in the Auckland Arts Festival. We go behind the scenes of their production, Havoc in a Garden. My name is Loretta Okuso. Hi, I'm Oliver Asi. I'm Biula Kuali. I'm Jake Tonga. The name of the play is Havoc in the Garden. Basically it's about five families who are in a situation where they're not able to leave their houses and while they're stuck they're, they're forced to confront certain conflictions that they've tried to hide. A guy called David Riley from Tangaro College introduced me to drama and I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want to do drama because it's not really manly. And, but when I started doing like the massive workshops, I, I got hooked and here we are. Call time was normally two hours before the show. Then we kind of have, um, we do a circle where we get together and we give good feedback from the last night performance and then we'll give good feedback for this performance and what we're trying to aim and just amp each other up. We get basically about 45 minutes to an hour to do a group warm up. You can't really just jump on stage and do the performance. You have to warm up physically. You've got to warm up vocally to be awesome, to be fantastic on stage. <laughs> The hardest thing about it is that South Auckland dialect. If we don't speak to the ends of our words, I realised that when I started with Massive, the way I speak, it's not clear on stage. And now with all the, the vocal warm-ups and the vocal training that you get, the way I put it, it's like I'm speaking like a palang. And a lot of the time, you don't think that's how you're supposed to speak, but that's what a lot of the vocal warm-ups for. Yoga um, is scary. Yeah. Yoga is it's, the thing in the warm-up that we don't look forward to but then afterwards we like feel awesome. The rugby players got nothing <laughs> on yoga. We always do a prayer. We pray a lot before a show. And um, we listen to music like Stan Walker. We love Stan Walker. what they've already done and they're just real stars of the show and people are just loving their performances. Oh, it was like really cool. It was like uh -huh. awesome as it was off the hook. I like how those heaps of problems going yeah. on now. It's pretty inspirational. Like it was tells inspirational. me to carry on acting. I felt proud, proud to perform this play in front of my school, Tangaro College, and the teacher that introduced me to acting, David Rolly, and I felt proud, so proud to be up here to perform for them. <laughs> Keep it fresh! I love tattoos. I have one here on my arm, it's, uh, it's of a wolf. It's got two eyes, just because when I was born, I, I had two eyes. Uh, the yellow, uh, just because I had liver problems when I was little. And it's got 11 whiskers, you can't really see them, but they represent a difficult year that I had up until I was 11. And there's 11, so every year was pretty difficult. But as you can see, every story has a tattoo. Hi, my name is uh, Steve Tapamahe, and I'm Tongan. I got my uh, tata tau or my tattoos done, uh, basically just to represent who I am as a Tongan, but also something to reflect my culture and also my identity. 
lift down basically is made up of Samoan, Tongan and Caucasian. I got Samoan patterns put into my tattoo just to represent my partner due to the fact that she's of Samoan uh, descent. Um, the rest of my patterns are made up of Tongan uh, patterns which are the Tokelau Feletoa but also the Manulua and also Marcasian. For me, it was important to have these patterns on me uh, due to the fact that um, they're quite distinctive Tongan patterns. The main reason why I love my tattoos is um, it basically represents who I am as a Pacific Islander, but most importantly as a Tongan. Um, I carry them with me wherever I go, so if I'm here in New Zealand, obviously it's identity, but if I'm overseas abroad, I carry my ink with me, not only inside of me, but also on my skin, uh, which reflects my culture. Uh, and that's the main thing, is to keep my culture alive. Like sand in your G-string, here's your weekly polyscope. Aries, there must be an error with your telecommunication, because I wasn't talking to you. Mind your own business, because when you jump the gun, everyone goes, where did you come from, Kokonai Joes? Don't push my buttons, because here's the buttons. Control, Alt and Delete. I'm outside St Paul's College in Grey Lynn. It's a pretty old school. Speaking of old school, this week from our fresh archives, our old school favourite is Wellington Group, The Holiday Makers, featuring Pati Umanga on bass and Mara Fino on vocals with their hit from 1980 <laughs> called Sweet Lovers. Playing and my heart keeps saying Boogie Wonderland. Gold. Gold. <laughs> it's gold, gold eh? <laughs> I'm putting my woolly chamber on. It's jelly, eh? <laughs> Grandma's Village, Upolo, Samoa. Welcome back, Freshies. Thanks to technology, it's now possible to keep in touch with all our people from around the world. I'm old school, so I prefer postcards. But this new segment, Poly Postcards, allows people to send us snapshots of their families from all around the planet. Mm. Hello, my name is uh, Fata Funaki. For me, yes, it's uh, Kolomotua. It's the best place here in Tonga. Some of the people from uh, overseas, like New Zealand, Australia, America, they send the calls, the, their children, to get uh, in the Kusawari College. Cyclone brought the, the boat ashore, and that's why it looked like a, a famous place for the people and also the fish. This is the other way of uh, fishing we doing here in Tonga. We must build the fence and using the wire and the fish get in there and they can't get out and the people come and get uh, right in the fish. And sometimes we get the shark and also the turtles but uh, mostly the small one, the snapper. <laughs> The local Komutu Araki field is very cool. And now the people of Komutu are from overseas America, Australia. And now we're doing uh, our donation for uh, to making a big fence to protect the field from the big and dogs everywhere. <laughs> like a little advertising of my place here in Tonga and I thank you for your time. Bye.
this. You going down, you going down. He meet me in the bay. He meet me in the mall. Mahogany, the sturdy, noble chestnut coloured wood, popular for making tables and chairs. That's in New Zealand. In Sydney, they're a singing group and they were finalists in last year's X Factor. Here they are, unplugged for your listening pleasure. Midnight creeps so slowly into hearts of men who need. Daylight leaves a bad hand to a woman that has laid too many beds. The mirror stares you in the face and says, baby, it's a word. And shake the head. Dance. Boogie Wonderland. Ha, ha. Dance. Boogie Wonderland. Midnight creeps so slowly. at the office to play with the guitar but hey you got to be watching fresh next week as our R&B starlet Aradna takes us on a tour of her mum's home island Savai. I'm chilling here on the white sand beautiful beach and we've got highlights from homegrown. Homegrown man you gotta go. And so ends the freshest hour on television. Thanks for hanging out with me, Oscar. Uh, it's 11 o'clock now. Go outside. Go do some work. Go finish your fiowls. Anyway, awesome hanging out with you. Stay gold, New Zealand.